Hello everyone, welcome back to another Friday and another casual champion review. Bard! It's Bard. It's Bard time. We made it to the B champions. At last, I didn't think it was possible. We've been stuck on the A champions for what feels like 5,000 years. But now we're here at last. I'm very excited about this one because I love Bard. It's going to be kind of tricky to talk about Bard actually because I already talked about him a bunch in the Season 5 Rewind. But also because there's not a whole lot to Bard. You know what there is a whole lot of? Th that's a bad segue because actually there's not as many this time. But <laughs> the, the, the fan art section. Uh, yes, look at them. As we go along with this series, there's probably going to be less and less people participating at, And that's fine because I think that's a big commitment to do more artwork of that every week. So I am very grateful to the people who have kept up with this whole thing and I understand people don't want to continue doing it. I'm shocked people started in the first place, but I do love showing it off, and it's so damn cool. I love it so much. Thank you, fellas. Well, this is going to be uh, an interesting game. There is stakes. There is something on the line here because I am one token away from Mastery 7 on Bard. Uh, also, my whole lobby is awful. My, my MMR is in the toilet right now, and to most people, that seems like, oh, well, you know, you're... What are you, platinum playing with silvers? No, it's the opposite. I'm like a gold player. Ouch. I'm like a gold player playing with diamonds and platinums all the time. I hate it. I, <laughs> I get punished. Ow. I get punished for playing on the same account for 13 years. Like, I'm not good at the game. I just play the game a lot. God, God damn it, Riot. So while I'm here getting my ass blasted by Squid Games, uh, let's go over the lore a bit. Uh, because Bard's Lord, there isn't a lot. It's gonna be uncharacteristically a really short part of the video, but we'll see. So Bard, as everyone probably already knows, is a celestial being who's existed since the beginning of time. So he existed around the same time as Aesol, but ow, he wasn't as productive. Ow, as Aurelian Soul. He was just kind of wandering around all the space, looking for things to do. And then stars are made by Aurelian Soul, and he loves them. And he loves that the, the, the songs that are created, which... I don't think it's actual songs, like it's not actual music, because he talks about it as well when he finds Runeterra, and Runeterra, all its songs are destructive and chaotic, but he's not referencing actual music, so I'm left to assume it's like a metaphor for maybe he's like, you know, he's a cosmic being, songs mean more to him than, you know, not actual songs, I don't know, it's confusing, that's his whole character. So he goes to Runeterra because of all the chaos, and he fashions himself a body because that's how Celestials- Oh. Well, you know what? Velkaz with Ghost. Uh, so because he needs a physical body to exist on Runeterra, he fashions himself a, uh, a kind of a mess of a body out of a Aeonian musician's wagon of supplies, so that's why he's got the big horn on his head and all these random fabrics and things because that's what he is, a bunch of random fabrics. And that's beneficial compared to Soraka who modeled herself after the Othrani tribe on Targon because she made a physical body of flesh and blood. Oh, well, we're dead. Soraka can't really exist on the planet very well because her physical body is burning through because of cosmic power, yada yada. And I guess Bar doesn't have that same problem because his body is made out of sticks and stones and fabric and cloth. So Soraka better get on that technology. Bard's figured out the secret. But Bard travels all around Rune Terra in search of magical objects that call out to him in its songs, and he discovers that a lot of the conflict and destruction in Rune Terra is because of these magical objects. And he gets kind of confused that so many are on Rune Terra, almost like they were placed there intentionally by a higher power. Hmm. In any case, Bard takes up his new role as the caretaker. So it's his new mission now to make sure he keeps all of these fantastical magical artifacts out of mortals' hands to keep them safe from themselves, basically. Bard isn't so much concerned with the lives of mortals as much as he's concerned with will their use of these crazy magical artifacts and weapons threaten existence itself? He's more concerned with the future than he is with the present. I mean, we saw that even in the cinematic for anyone who remembers when Barb released, he got that big cinematic trailer and he goes and he takes the orb, the magical artifact from that guy. They're being invaded by Noxians. And he says something along the lines of, our village will die without its power. And Barb just, <laughs> swipes it, takes it to the top and he, he teleports away with it. He's like, yeah, that, no, this thing's too powerful for you people. I'm not letting anyone have this, uh, goodbye. And, uh, assumedly, 
That whole village died afterwards, so... But it does beg the question, I think. I know that it happened a lot later than when Bard was released, but I really would like to see how Bard interacts with the world runes. I think he'd be on that, wouldn't he? He'd really want to be invested in that. I feel like that's one thing he'd definitely want mortals to stay away from, so... You know, Riot, give me a Bard and Rise team-up comic. Oh. Cool. Yeah, that's kind of it for lore on Bard. This feels weird. Usually this part of the video lasts like a solid 15, 20 minutes and we're done in half that time. I guess Bard just doesn't really have a lot of lore to his name. He's a very simple character. He's just a cosmic guy going around doing cosmic things. This is revenge. Well, you're dead. So this is weird. I guess we can get straight into the design part of Bard. Uh, I mean, look at him. <laughs> He's great. Echoes of Heli- what does this even do? Well, it says to build it, so I guess we'll try. I never built this before. I should say, I have barely played any of this new patch. I have been ran down by the horse 50 times over already, and 80 carry bot lane seems to be king of the, the meta, so, you know, I hate it here. Oh. I feel like I might be taking too many kills. Hold on. This is my M7 game. This is it. Mastery 7 Bard. <laughs> yes. This is the time. I feel like to anyone who doesn't already know, yeah, Bard was very much inspired by Studio Ghibli, and I don't really have anything to say about that because get your pitchforks ready. I've never seen it. Yes, my hatred of anime has extended to I have never watched Studio Ghibli. I have never watched Spirited Away. I've never watched any other of their things. This is revenge, horse! This is- Oh, this feels so satisfying. You guys have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. Huh? What? Wait, I did But I- I healed Ari, and I- That- Does this- I'm- I'm so confused. I, I guess I never explained why I don't like anime. Uh, from the obvious fact that a lot of it's quite, um... Horny, let's say. Uh, how do I describe why? Okay, if I'm going to describe why I don't like anime, imagine this scenario, all right? So apparently, My Little Pony is a really great show. From what I've heard. Would I watch it? Or would many of you watch it who are not interested in that fandom? Even if it's a great show? Probably not. Why? I imagine... Like myself, it would probably make you feel uncomfortable to watch. Because it's just like you're very clearly not the target demographic. The art style and everything surrounding the community makes you feel uncomfortable. Right? That's anime to me. It just... I, I don't feel comfortable. I, I feel on edge the whole time and I don't like it. Maybe Studio Ghibli would be different. So, I, you know, I'm willing to give it a shot, maybe, for Bard's sake. I mentioned it in the Season 5 Rewind that I love character designs where I cannot immediately tell what it is I'm actually looking at in a character. It makes you think about it, not in the way that it's just a jumbled mess of pixels and blobs and random shapes in an abstract sort of way. More like, uh, if, if I'm gonna pose the biggest example, I used it in the video as well with Shara Ishvalda, which I'll, I'll put up on screen here. It's the final boss of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Okay, that's a dragon something. It's, it's confusing and it makes you think. That's what Bard is like for me. I think it's just because Bard is a weird mess and simultaneously completely cohesive. Everything looks like it should be where it is, but also looks like it's all over the place. It's really, it, he's just kind of a marvel in that regard. I can see how when people say, well, he doesn't really look like a mix of a bunch of musicians, garbage and things. I get that. He could look a little bit messier in that regard. I think if you, if you want a real great example of something like that, look at the junk construct from Legends of Runeterra. Great example, just a bunch of random bullshit cobbled together. This still makes a cool looking character. Bard, I feel like, has to be a bit more consistent. You can't have a character that abstract in League of Legends because you need to have their silhouette be more clear and they need to be simple enough that you can make skins about them, so... 
I mean, not like Bard gets skins ever, but you know, like I love his, he's got the big horn on his head. He's got the chimes all over the place, the big seams on his arms to show that he's made of fabric and stuff. I think that's all really great. I don't know about the beard though. I, I, maybe it's like just some big wig or something. <laughs> I don't know. The big part that I like about Bard is his mask. And that seems like a very simple thing because he's supposed to be a cosmic being. He's otherworldly, so you'd think he wouldn't look very humanoid, but he is very humanoid shaped, if a little chonky and a little thin at the foot area, but he has this mask and it's just three dots. It's nothing besides three dots. There's not even a smile, but because human monkey brain see dots assembled in that order, even if it's for something as simple as just three dots in a triangle shape, we recognize it as a face. And it gives that little bit of humanity to him. And there's a reason that all the fan art of him morphed those little dots on his mask to mimic different facial animations because a human brain see dots and we see face. But it's not correct, right? It's, it's slightly uncanny because it's not a proper face. We can identify that it looks like one, but we know at the same time it isn't one. That just gives a big sense of otherworldliness to his design. I just, I love it. I think it's ingenious. I think actually that's a great word for Bard in general. Just his design, it's genius. I just I think it's it's marvelous. There's no character in the game like Bard. I also just love how he doesn't talk. I think that's just a really, really creative design, which makes sense because he's made out of fabrics and things. He's made out of musical instruments. So the big big horn on his head, I imagine maybe he's like Parasaurolophus, where he just communicates with the big horn on his head. So I, it feels kind of random to mention Parasaurolophus out of nowhere, but I'm I'm dinosaur pilled at the moment. I, I've been I've been watching Prehistoric Planet season two. It's the only reason I got Apple TV, but it's been great. I love it. I, have you guys watched it? If you haven't watched Prehistoric Planet, it's like imagine any nature documentary narrated by David Attenborough. They got David Attenborough back for this too, but like it's like that, but CGI dinosaurs in the replacement of animals. It's it's a marvel. It's great. That vein's not so great though. Is there much more I can even say about Bard's design? I really don't think there is. I just I think he's phenomenal. I I wouldn't realistically know how to improve him without muddling up his design or making it more confusing. Just as he is, he serves his function exactly how he's supposed to. An otherworldly cosmic nomad. It just is beautiful. I, I think he's great. So that leaves us with his gameplay. And my god, if you guys weren't around when Bard released, he was a controversial lad for sure. There was a whole meme back when Donkey made League of Legends videos, that Bard was the worst character in the entire game. And some people still think that way. Like this, this is a perfect example of how I, oh I fuck, I completely fucked it up. Fucking horse. In that instance, I'm only kind of proving it correct that a lot of people view Bard as a troll character. Mainly because, well, he's only got one damaging ability. His ult is just a giant Zhonya's for both the enemies and your team. So there is a very large potential. You could troll your own team instead of actually assisting them. So it was seen as like, oh, if you pick Bard, that means you're trolling. You're there to negatively impact your team. You're also a roaming support, so you're encouraged to leave your AD carry alone to fend for themselves. But you know what? I didn't play him a lot at the start. I still liked him, mainly because I just really liked his design. And I think he was just very creative. He's kind of lived most of existence like that. You know, I, I, I feel it was only recently that Bard was really, oh, but I was only really discovered for how useful the character he actually is because a well-timed bard alt can turn the tide of a fight completely in their team's favor. It is such a powerful tool. Like how I'll use it right now. Watch. There we go. Now no Gargus. Gargus dead. That never happened. I really want to get Mastery 7 bard, dude. I I've been stuck on Mastery 6 for a long time and I don't think I'm gonna get any more. I, I was eight and one at one point this game, and then I died six times in a row, so I feel like that dream is dead, but you know what? If that Summathon things ever goes through, and the Twitch chat gets to choose which champion I get to Mastery 7 next, if they somehow choose Bard, that's gonna be the easiest one in the world because I only have one token left. <laughs> so that is the best case scenario in that regard. What else can even be said about this lad? Uh, I'm kind of at a loss for words. 
Oh, I did it. That was me. I saved her. Even if I don't get Master 7 today, Barge is one of those characters that I'm just gonna play casually anyway. You guys might have noticed that usually when I get Mastery 7 on a champion, I tend to kind of stop playing them for a while. I treat Mastery 7s more as an achievement hunting thing. Like, you know how we have Eternals? Mastery 7 is my version of Eternals, except you don't have to pay for Mastery. You just play the game and learn new characters. So, usually once I've got Mastery 7 on a character, I move on to the next one. Even if I don't get Mastery 7 here today, that just means I get to play more Bard. And What's wrong with that, right? Bard's great. Oh, I, I should mention skins. I, <laughs> you know, I realized I brought up the whole skins thing in the Anavia video, and then I forgot about it completely and entirely. Uh, <laughs> can I even remember all the Bard skins off the top of my head? Uh, there's Elderwood. Uh, that's the Yako skin. That's what I always think of now when I think of Elderwood Bard. Uh, Bard Bard is one of the best 750 skins in the game, don't at me. Snow Day Bard as well, I think that's what popularized the penguins. You know, maybe Pengu in TFT? Maybe we have Snow Day Bard to thank for that. What other skins does he got? He's got, uh, Astronaut. That one's pretty good. He throws the little alien goobers at you. Uh, does Bard have any more skins? I don't actually remember. Oh, he's got Cafe Cutie, that's the one I'm forgetting. How could I forget that one? That's like one of his best ones. Granted, Bard doesn't have a single bad skin. I'm just gonna say it. He's one of those champions that has not a single bad skin on him. I think by the nature of it being a 750 skin, Bard Bard's the worst, but it's still, for a 750, it's phenomenal. Bard's just, all in all, great character. I'm sad this episode's over because I, I love Bard. But you know what? Next time, I think it's Blitzcrank, which is another character I like. Oh no, it's Belveth. Ah, oh, fuck. I gotta return to Bell that probably Well, I'll see you next time, fellas. Goodbye. Oh! Wait. Oh, shit. Wait, you guys can't see the screen. I did it, guys. I did it. Master 7 Bard. Somehow. S plus? I died nine times. Doesn't matter. Uh, see you next time. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>